well-organized decision and provide us uh, opportunity to conduct this trip. So hopefully we are staying safe and health during this situation, the COVID-19 outbreaks. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Iqbal Fardiansa. I'm a representative of, from uh, IAG Riau chapter in, in uh, Riau, Sumatra. And I'm currently working for Chevron in Central Sumatra Basin for the Khan Block, uh, actually. So basically, this trip is follow up from latest work by Mas Ayu Bowo, who conduct field sedimentology study in Payakumu Basin during 2012 until 2015. And then the study later on continues by Mas Diki and Leon in 2017. Uh, they collect actually digital or prop model data in several cliffs for geobody analysis in Payakumbu. So uh, the background of this, uh, this trip actually coming up with the lack of understanding and information about the early sin drift deposit itself. As you know that early sin drift uh, deposit is limited exposed to the surface as an outcrop data. Mostly the deposit will preserve in the subsurface, which is people commonly using the subsurface data set such as core data, well, and seismic uh, image to evaluate that. So I think uh, this trip is a good opportunity to, to us to look at directly the early sin drift product. So what the deposit look like in virtual outcrops. So uh, the objective of this trip, actually, of course, we can get in touch with the rock virtually, not unfortunately not reality but we can looking at the uh, outcrops to get more insight of sedimentology of early sin drip, such as the source to seam process and geometry. And the second, how we utilize those outcrop data as an analog to predict the reservoir geobody and reduce uncertainty uh, in uh, subsurface interpretation. So for the third, indeed, I encourage anyone to continue to this uh, study to this basin because we have very limited reference related to this basin, mostly uh, the reference uh, coming from Ombilin Basin in, in the southern part of the Payakmu Basin. So keep in mind, uh, the study actually has not finished yet. We still acquire more data study and a lot of discussion and complete comprehension result for this basin. So in this trip, we also encourage all uh, the participants to voice up their idea, concept, and feedback, if any, during the discussion. Hopefully you can enjoy and have fun with this trip. So Mas Ari will lead to bring us to look at some more crop of ground information around the Payakumbu and Haro Valley. Unfortunately, we cannot visit all the old crop uh, from uh, the surrounding area because time is not allocated for that. Okay, Ari, let's continue uh, to West Sumatra. Thank you, Mas Iqbal. Good morning, everyone. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Ari Wibowo. I'm currently working for HRS Geology as a support geologist based in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. So I'm more than happy today to share to you some outcrops in Payakumbu area as a result of my study during in the university. So hopefully today by looking at these outcrops, we can get a better understanding about the concept of the uh, early sin reef alluvial fluvial systems products. So let's start session today by discussing about the regional framework. We will discuss uh, from the tectonic and stratigraphy perspective. And today we will be visiting seven outcrops in total. Starting from the subset one, we will see the Sumatra basements, where also we can see the border fall as a boundary between the, uh, the uh, Sumatra you know, basement with the uh, formation above. And also we move on to the stop side two, where we can find the uh, Fanglomerans uh, deposits, uh, which are related to the uh, initiation uh, reef stage. And the stop side three and four, we hope we can discuss in more detail about the braided river systems depos deposits in, in the medial environment. And we move on to stop side five, six, and seven, where we can find the, uh, the distal part of this uh, alluvial fluvial systems. After that, Mas Iqbal will explain in more detail about these implications to the reservoir geobody for the subsurface interpretations. At the end, we will have a discussion session. So I, I hope today we will be more uh, open discussion. So uh, we are open to any feedback and input from you if you uh, recognize some um, crops in nearby data. So feel free to let us know. 
Okay. So this is the uh, structure map of the Palaeogon Graben from the Hendrik Aulia, 1996. So the well-known basins, which is Omlin basins, is located in the southern area. Yeah. Whereas the uh, Payakomu basin is located in northern area. So the Payakomu basins can be interpreted as a part of the Omlin basins in the Palaeogon Graben. The size of Payakomu basin is relatively smaller. It's only up to 500 square kilometers, comparing to Omilin that can be up three times bigger, which is uh, 1,500 square kilometers. So by seeing this uh, regional uh, structure map of the Palaikon Graben, we can see that Payakumbu basins, the geometry of Payakumbu basin is basically a reef basin, but in asymmetrical half graben, comparing to the Omilin basin, which have a full graben and symmetrical form. If we go back again to Payakumbu Basin, we can see the main depot center was located to the northwest, to the southwest of the Kelok Sembilan Fault. So if you are very familiar with Kelok Sembilan in West Sumatra, so our North Cop is nearby, is close to the Kelok Sembilan Fault. Also, in the, we have the Takum Transfer, which is as the boundary of the northwest southeast fault, Takum Transfer Fault. If we can see the stratigraphic column in the regional, Starting from the basement, we have the pre-tertiary quantan formations in carbon perams, which consists of quartzite, a fillet, and slate. And during this session, we will focus on the early scenery phase, which is the product of alluvial fluvial deposits of the brani formations. It's important to note that the, in the ombilian basins, there is a, some a proof or evidence for the existence of the Sankarewang formations as a shell lacustrine of the part of the uh, early scenery product. But in the Payakomo basins, based on the surface study, we do not find any Sankarayang formations on the surface. Even in the Payakomo basin, there is no exploration well exists until now, so we cannot prove the existence of Sankarayang formation. However, this model of the regional uh, stratigraphic column might be updated later once we find any findings about Sankarayang. Okay. Now, we are in the Sumatra Island. We will go to West Sumatra. So, administratively, the outcrops today belongs to Payakumbu City. It takes about four hours from Pekanbaru City and around five to six hours from Padang Airport. If you notice, this is the modern Lake uh, Singkarak in the southern part, and the northern is uh, Lake Maninjau. So this is a geomorphology map from the uh, Fletcher and Yarmanto, 1993. At least we can divide by three geomorphological units. From the east, the purple one, you can see that this is the, the East Barisan Range. And in the middle, there is a central median graben along with the Great Sumatran Fault. And also there is a West Barisan Range, the green one in the west. So today we will focus on the Payakum Basin that belongs to Central Median Graben. So if we overlay with the structure map of Palaibon Graben, we can see the well-known Ombilin Basin is located here, whereas we Payakum Basin is located in the northern part. So all of the outcrops belong to the Payakum Basins, all the outcrops that we're going to visit today. You can see the, 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 the asymmetrical form of Payakumu basins compared with the Ombilin basins. We overlay with the geological map, we can see the distribution of the brani formation on surface in the Payakumu area. So if you see this black line, is in the Kelok Sembilan Fault, as a boundary between the uh, quantum formation, the basement, to the uh, formation above, which is the uh, Abrani formations. You can see also the distribution of the, the uh, quarter sediment in the southern part. Actually, we can still find the Abrani formation in the Omilin basins in the southern part, but we find that the good exposure of off crops can be, find, can be found in the Payakumbu area which is in Harau Valley, to be specific.
So this is the geomorphology of the uh, Haro Valley in the Payakobu area. We will stop. We will start the trip today from north to the south. So starting from stop set one, stop set two, until stop set seven. So basically, starting from we will see the the basement of the Kuantan formation in the stop set one, which we can observe also the uh, border fall between the stop set one and stop set two. As you can see, if you aware that this is a narrow cliff, yeah, this one. Uh, northeast to southwest, indicating that this is a Kellogg Sambilan fault as a border fault. The boundary between the basement in stop set one and the Fanglomerate product in stop set two, which is as a part of the reef initiation stage. From the back side, we can see some several narrow cliff as well with the steep cliff, indicate that it's controlled by the Kellogg Sambilan fault with the orientation of the northeast southwest. And now we are going to move to stop set one. So the location of stop set one is roughly one kilometer from the, the famous waterfall uh, Harau, the, the tourism object in the uh, Harau Valley. So in this outcrop, we will see the, the quantum formations, which is parent to carbon which I believe as the basement of the Payakomu basins. You can see the quartzite in the right side, the white is carved quartzite, and the left there's some uh, slate to fill it, uh, metamorphism basements. Unfortunately, the outcrop is quiet weather due to the surface erosions, but we still can observe the lithology of this, uh, this outcrop. It's important to note that this basement plays an important role to produce the sediment in the development of the formation above, which is a brand new formations, the, the, the focus of our uh, talk today. Now from north, we are facing to the south. To remind you again, we see some narrow cliff before here, yeah, indicate the Kellogg Samila. So this is the detailed picture of the uh, Sumatran basement in the stop set one, you see some quartzite as part of the quantum formation, so with the slate and pilot. And from the picture in the right picture as well, we can see that the structure control is quite intense in this outcrop. Okay. Now we are moving from north to the south. Basically, we are moving from stop set one to stop set two, the distance is roughly about 1.5 kilometer to the south. If you notice, we are going to visit the high topography relief. We can see some steep cliff with some layer beddings. So all of these vegetations give us the initial uh, clue or initial interpretation that uh, these outcrops are uh, dominant by the, uh, sed the coarse grain sediments where the vegetations are dominant uh, showing the beddings of the layer. This one in this top set one here, which is only the basement, so there is no stratification in the outcrop. So now we are seeing the stratification. It means that it indicates that it's gradually changed to the, it will change to the, the for different formation, which is brand new formations. So this is the detail of the outcrop in lower section. Due to the huge size of the outcrop, we divide into two, lower section and upper section. So from the descriptive data, from the set log profile, we can see the dominant of phenglomerates faces, which is characterized by the gravel to boulder size, poorly sorted. If you can see from the picture, it's very poorly sorted. They can mix of the coarse grain and uh, fine grain, and angular, very ang to angular, and floating to sandy matrix. And you see, if you notice, there's are some polymic fragments, so there's a different, showing the different rock types of in the conglomerate. Uh, uh, if you see, there's no structure, very developed in this uh, outcrop, it's very structureless, poorly bedding, and the pattern, staking pattern is, in general, is blocky sequence. 
if you see from the outcrop, this one, yeah, the bedding is not very obvious. We will interpret that this section is belongs to the debris flow, which is related to the sediment gravity flow, where is associated with the rift initiated initiation initiation stage, where this uh, the high slope environment trigger the sediment gravity flow or mass flow to happen. Okay. If we see from the upper section of this outcrop, is dominant by the, some sandy uh, massive sandstone is already developed. See some blocky and some uh, immature texture of the sedimentary rocks. So if we move to the upper section from the sedimentary, sedimentary log provide, we can see the conglomerate faces gradually change to be a sandy conglomerates with some pebbly sandstone at the base of the channel bodies. It is characterized by the very coarse sand to boulder clay size, very poorly sorted, subangular to angular and matrix quarter. As you can see, and the soil crop is already started to create a channel. This one it started already created the channel feature, as indicated that some uh, normal graded bedding of columnarat. Normal bedded bedded columnarat is already uh, uh, dominant at the upper sections. And also we find some cross stratification indicates the paleo current is goes to the east. Yeah. So from the uh, from this, this is the model of the uh, example of the alluvial fan modern. So to show us or give us a clue that uh, to represent the uh, brand formations model. So we are very close to border. And at the bottom section, we see some conglomerates in the previous uh, section, which now we are seeing the uh, upper section where the, uh, the amalgamated channel field complex is already started, which associated with the braided river systems in order to uh, transporting the, the material from the source. So because the nature of the braided uh, system in this area, we very close to the source, it's showing the product is very uh, up to boulder, cobble to boulder size. Now we are moving from stop site two to stop site three. So basically, we are moving to the southwest. The distance is roughly about 1.3 kilometer. So to let you know that we are visiting a different hills. So this is this hills is the opposite of the previous hills. But we're still visiting the high topography. It means it indicates that the sediment in this outcrop still uh, have the, uh, the uh, dominant of the coarse grain. We will see the detail of the uh, outcrop in the top set three in the virtual outcrop model. The old crop size is huge. The vertical height is up to 200 meters and the horizontal width up to 600 meters. Keep in mind that the scale bar is 25 meters. So you can imagine the huge size of this old crop. So in this old crop, we will, hopefully we will find some a channel, multiple channel types based on the printer classification 2009. So mostly texture in this outcrop becomes more mature in the term of the grain size, could be ranging from medium sand to cobble, moderate, poorly sorted, subbounded to, to subangular. And now we are looking at the multi-story channel complex at the bottom section, which indicates that the traction systems works in transporting the sediment material, comparing with the previous outcrop where the conglomerates related with the sediment gravity flow, where the traction system is, it doesn't work. But now we can see the, yeah, we can see the multi-story channel dominant in the bottom section. If we look closely, we can see the boundary with the channel stacking on the top of the channel below underlying the channel, the older channel. 
see, you can see the, the, the vegetations help us to identify the core sediments, which, which belongs to the channel bodies. By seeing this via a virtual or from model, we can see in detail the grain size is, is quite uh, coarse, up to cobble, pebble to cobble. Yeah. So the, the vertical thickness of the sand bodies, each, each sand bodies is ranging from 50 centimeter up to 10 meter. Considering this is still close to border. So it's still a short distance of sedimentation. So if we look closely, keep in mind the scale bar is 25. If we look closely to the outcrop in the left side, We see this one is the, the individual channel, individual single channel. We have a V profile with the thickness up to 10 meters. So we consider this a narrow channel. We will compare this with the uh, meandering channel in the later on in the next slide. And also Mas Iqbal will explain in detail about the horizontal versus vertical ratio related to the to the uh, geobody's uh, measurement. Yeah, you can see some uh, gravel to cobble materials dominant in the channel bodies. If we move to the left section of this outcrop, We can see the multi stellar channel stacking on the top of each other. And in general, we can see this is the channel belt, which we believe as the braided stream channel belt, which up to 200 meters in the, the width of the, this channel belt. So in this channel belt, we can see the, basically the channel complex shift from west to the east. So from the left to the right, due to the nature of the braided stream, it could be a dynamic uh, shift, but in the, so the orientation could be from west to east or east to west, or, or vice versa. But in this section, in the specific section, we see from shifting from west to east. Now we are look closely to, to the multi-story channel, which dominant in the top section. If we can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. So this is for the, uh, the boundaries of the multi-story channel, stacking and underlying the older channel, showing that the sedimentation is quite intense. So this is the brief summary of the uh, or crop uh, at the stop set three. As I mentioned before, at the lower, we can see the uh, amalgamated channel complex dominance. So basically consists of the multi-story channel, but with the larger of the, uh, the, the complex of the, the multi-story. And the upper section, we will see, we have seen the uh, multilateral channel complex dominance with the channel bodies, the vertical thickness of the channel bodies uh, relatively up to two, ranging from two to five meter. And from the sedimental log profile, we see the, the, block, the pattern is some at some point will be a blocky and rough in general will be finding upwards sequence. Okay. If you notice that the color in the top is quite reddish or maroon, which indicates that the oxidation uh, process uh, uh, influence in the, during the deposition of this braided stream channel. We will discuss this later when we meet the meandering channel stream deposits. Okay. So if you remember in the previous outcrop, we see that the initial channel created in the proximal fan. Now in the medial environment, this uh, environment is linked to the proximal area via this braided uh, fluvial systems 
which transporting material from the source, from the upstream, from the proximal area to this material. So it's really, a, it's, this outcrop is associated with the abraded uh, stream deposits. Where the traction systems is a works dominance. Now we are moving from stop site three to stop site four. So basically you are moving from north to the south. The distance is roughly about 1.4 kilometer. Basically we are, we are visiting the opposite hills from stop site three. From this geomorphology, we, we are visiting the high topographic relief where uh, the vegetation are dominant at the tops, indicating that the core sediments are dominant in this outcrop. <clears throat> to be specific, this outcrop is located is in the around one kilometer from the waterfall in the Harau Valley uh, tourism uh, object. So now, if you notice that compared with the previous outcrops, in this outcrop we have a different color, which is more white and brighter than the, the stop set at uh, the stop set three. From our interpretation, actually, in the initial interpretation, it could be two possibilities having this. A different characteristic. Either it could be this channel in this section is developed without any oxidation proce uh, process uh, related, or it could be coming from different provenance. Let me know your comments so we will discuss later and during the discussion session. So this outcrop size is still quite huge to be honest. The vertical height is up to 80 meters. And the horizontal is up to 200 feet, 250 meters. Unfortunately, the channel features are not clearly observed due to the outcrop is located to parallel to axis. It's not perpendicular, so we cannot see clearly. From sediment to like set lock profile, we can see the intercalations between fine sand to pebble conglomerates. In general, the texture Specifically, the grain size is moderate to poorly uh, to conglomerates, and the sorted the sortation is still uh, moderate to poorly sorted with some subangular uh, fragment. And they said from the net to grass ratio, also we can see that it's dominant by the core sediments in this outcrop. So based on some key sedimentary structure, for example, uh, from the trough uh, cross stratification and the uh, score mark, we can get the Apaleka run is goes to Southeast. Okay, uh, so this is the example of the modern alluvial fan to give us a uh, clue or that this abraded channel is associated with the subareal alluvial fan where we are now in the medial environments. So still considering this is uh, still a part, uh, close to the border, close, still relatively close to the proximal, so we still find the grain size is still cobble, pebble to cobble, where the uh, multiple channel is developed very well in this environment. Okay. <clears throat> now we are moving from stop set four to stop set five. So basically, we are moving from to the southeast, from north to the southeast. It's roughly about three point half kilometer. So we are moving from the high topography relief to the low rail topography. These outcrops located in the residential area. Unfortunately, this is the our, our outcrop we're going to visit. We cannot go closer due to the limitation of the Google Earth. So we will visit the outcrop using a digital outcrop model. So now we are facing to the Southwest. The outcrop size is smaller than the previous one. The vertical size up to 12 meter. 
Meanwhile, the horizontal length or width is up to 40 meter. In general, texture in these outcrops, specifically the grain size is ranging from silt to pebble, moderate to poorly sorted, and we find some soup rounded, soup rounded to rounded grain, where the grain supported dominant in this uh, outcrop. The, bed, the individual bed thickness is roughly from 50 centimeter up to 200 centimeter. And now we are looking at the multi-story channel complex where we can see the lateral migrations move from north to the south. If you can remember, in the previous outcrop, we see some the braided stream deposit. We have a V-shape or narrow channel. In this outcrop, we see some wider channel, which we believe that this is the different uh, channel system compared with the previous one. Our interpretations comes to conclude that these are the meandering channel deposits. If you notice the, the sequence, the channel thickness from the bottom to the up is thinning, become thinning. From up to one meter, yeah, it will be up uh, and then upward become 50 centimeter. It could be related with accommodation space versus sediment supply, which indicates that decays to lower energy moving upward. So this is the example of the individual uh, multi-story channel. And see clearly that it overlying the uh, finite sediment as a part of the overbank deposit or of floodplain deposits. If you notice that in this outcrop is fine sediment with the gray color and the purple color is quite dominant. We also find the thin bed of the paleosols at the top of the lower channel. You see this purple one? Yeah, it indicates that the channel bodies was exposed during the deposition of the channel body. So <clears throat> from the paleo current measurement, we get the, the general paleo currents goes to the west. So this is the uh, brief summary of the uh, outcrop at top set five. As I mentioned before, the sequence, the general sequence become thinning upward. So it may indicates that related with the sediment supply and accommodation space, where the channel bodies become thinner upward. And also the dominance of the paleosol bed at the top of the channel indicates that it related with the oxidations. And if you look more closely, the outcrop, this is the example, the top picture is the example of the horizontal stratifications, which dominant in the channel body, contact with the paleosol. Yeah, yeah, the, the pink one, the purple one, yeah. And the, and the picture below, we can see that the channel body overlying the upper bank deposit, uh, which consists of the uh, lamination seal stones. So now we are moving from stop set five to stop set six. So basically we are moving from west to the east. The distance is roughly about 1.2 kilometer. So the outcrop location at the stop set six is in the backside of the local government office, which is the DPRD uh, Kota Panjang, 50 Kota. Unfortunately, we cannot see clearly from Google Maps, so we move on to the digital outcrop model. So now we are facing to the west. The outcrop size is relatively smaller. Vertical is up to 20 meter. Horizontal is up to 60 meter. Yeah. Keep in mind the scale bar is five meters, so you can imagine the, the scale of this outcrop. In general, Texture in these outcrops, specifically the grain size, is ranging from silt to pebble, moderate to poorly sorted, soup rounded to soup run, rounded, and supported by grain. Now we are seeing the multi-story channel. So we also can observe the lateral migration of this channel body. 
just roughly from north to the south. Due to the nature of the meandering stream, it's actively uh, switched directions. But we can see now it's safe from north to south. <clears throat> so the individual bed thickness is ranging for 50 centimeter up to 200 centimeter. We can see the channel clearly because we, the outcrop is perpendicular to the channel axis, so basically to the west. If you notice, the channel bodies in this outcrop also showing the thinning upward. So at the bottom section, we see some very thick channel bodies up to one meter and then become thinner going upward. Now we are look closely to the individual single channel. Yeah, this is the example of the single channel body. The thickness of this individual channel body is up to 50 centimeter to one meter. And the width is up to two meter. And it's dominant that some crevice play at the top section, very thin bed of crevice play among the, uh, the overbank deposits. So this is the brief summary of the outcrop at stop set six. So we can see clearly the lateral aggregation in this meandering channel complex. And also we noticed that we found some sedimentary structure like a pebble like deposits dominant in the bottom of the channel bodies, uh, arrow, and then we find some trough cross certification uh, in the part of the channel bodies. So basically, this paleosol in the middle of the channel bodies uh, is very good. It could be very useful for the correlation marker, considering that the lateral continuity of this paleosol bed. If you notice that the paleosols on in the top section is, is not developed in the uh, channel in the bottom section, only in the middle section and upward. If below, if you see the channel bodies, there is no top uh, paleosols develop in the in the channel in the bottom sections. It may that indicates that the environment in the bottom section, when during the deposition of the channel body, uh, is not related, uh, is not associated with the uh, with the surface or area. Meanwhile, the environment this in the top section will become the poorly drained. So we can see the dominant of some fine sediments and also the paleosols they follow very well. So it means in indicate that the changing of the environment to the with the poorly drained uh, environment. So below is the picture of the uh, sedimentary structure, one sample of the cross stratifications and some pebble-like deposits that dominant in the channel, the basal of the channel body. We can see some. Uh, Quartz and lithics dominant in the channel in this uh, pebble-like sandstone basis. In general, showing that funding up sequence, overlying the massive silt stone as a part of the overbank and flat plain deposits. Okay, now we are moving to stop set six to stop set seven. So basically, we are moving to the southeast. The distance is around half kilometer to the to stop set seven, which is our last outcrop for today. So the specific location of this outcrop is in the backside of the rumah makan Sari Lamak. So you can see in detail. Sorry. So we, we will see the detail of the sedimentary feature using the filter outcrop model. So we are seeing the west orientations. To be honest, this outcrop is the smallest among the others. Vertical size is up to 10 meter and the horizontal width is up to 100 meter. However, despite the small size of this outcrop, we can see the three-dimensional three view of this outcrop. So hopefully we can see the, the continuity of the channel body from the back view. 
So now we are looking at the individual of the multi-story channel. This thickness is up to one meter. Showing the lateral accretion from north to the south. So basically from left to the right. Again, due to the nature of the mandarin, so it's we actively switching directions. In general, the texture then size in this area is to be sealed to pebble, where it's dominant by the moderate to poorly sorted and super under grain, where we can find fine sediment dominated in this area, which indicates that the outcrops in this area is belongs to very distal environment from the whole uh, series of alluvial pluvial systems. Now, if we can see from the different view from the back side to get the three dimensional of this channel body, Then we can zoom in a little bit. Keep in mind that the scale bar is five meter. Yeah. So vertically it's only up to 10 meter. Maybe it could be less. Now we are seeing the, uh, the channel from the back side. So this is the example of the single channel. Keep in mind that actually the width of channel is not this could be longer than this due to the lack of the limited of the outcrop, so we don't know the lateral continuity of these uh, channel bodies. So as you can see in this outcrop, we see the dominant of the uh, fine sediments as part of the flat plain deposits. This is an example of the individual channel body. The thickness is up to one meter. This is the closer detail of the channel bodies overlying the fine sediments that consist of the laminated uh, seal stones as part of the flood plan uh, overbank deposits. So this is the brief summary of the outcrop at the stop set seven. So we can see that the paleosols development is quite intense and also at, at the top of this channel body. The sedimentary structure that we can observe will be, be cross-stratified and some pebble-like deposits dominant. So this example of the rootlet, uh, I put the question mark so to, to, not to confirm that this is the part of the rootlet and the paleosols. The indication the indicates that this channel body exposed and allows the vegetation to grow at the top of the channel. Which, from our interpretation, it could be due to the poorly drainage at that time. And below, we see some pebble lake deposits overlying the fine sediments in the basal of the, in the channel body. Yeah, this one. Okay. So this is uh, the summary of the sedimentary log profile from the representative outcrop from in the distal environment. So I just want to emphasize that the vertical lithophysis variations across the outcrops, we can find some uh, same similar sediment structure, which are the trough cross stratifications and dominant of the pebble like sandstone and the basalt of the channel bodies. So in general, the, the uh, stacking pattern is finding, but at some point it will be coarsening and the, uh, the crevice plate deposits we interpret as a part of the crevice plate. And the, based on the paleocaron measurement, we get the paleocaron is goes to west to uh, southwest. So which is, if you remember, in the previous outcrop in the middle environment, we have paleocarons goes to the southeast. Meanwhile, in this distal environment, specifically in the Mandarin Channel system, we have the paleocarons goes to the southwest uh, to west. 
So basically, it's perpendicular toward general direction of a fan. So this is just an example of image of the alluvial fan related to the axial channel. So from our interpretations, that all the channel in this uh, distal environments belong to the uh, axial channel by seeing the from this characteristic and also from the uh, paleocurrents that it's a perpendicular toward the general direction of the alluvial proximal to medial environment of the alluvial fan complex yeah it's perpendicular so it's become the axial channel let me know your comment later on and this is the sedimentology log analysis so in order to get the more detail about the property of the rocks of the channel bodies, we grab some samples to know the for the petrography analysis and also for the core analysis. So if you see from the left picture corner, left corner here, we can see the example of the thin section showing that the quartz grain is dominant and very lack of uh, feldspar or uh, clay minerals in this section, showing the grain size range from half millimeter to one millimeter. So basically from medium to coarse grain, same. So it's still some grain still angular to sub-rounded and poorly to a more direct sorted since we find some mix, still mixed uh, grain. So it's still a coarse uh, sand with uh, some fine sediment, uh, great sand. And also the abundance of the monocrystalline quartz indicates that lack of the mineral plagioclase and some lack of clay content in this section. Uh, from the porosity uh, measurement, we we and the permeability, it looks like it appears that the trough cross stratification phases demonstrate a good uh, properties among the others, such as the porosity for the effective up to 20%, and the permeability could be uh, up to 400, and in in the top could be ranging from 400 up to 3,200 milliDarc. Again. Keep in mind that the, the range of this property value are possibly due to the weathering and the digenetic process due to the, the, the outcrop. The data is taken from the outcrop on the surface. So we still we need to be, uh, however, this actual data can still be used for the, uh, for the petrophysical for subsurface, but it might consider to use some uh, correction for the, the, uh, the value. Overall, the net to grass ratio in this uh, outcrops indicates that the shale composition is relatively high, more than 5 or 50%, sorry, which indicates that these deposits belong in very distal environments. Last but not least, this is the proposed or the conceptual depositional model of the paleography uh, brani formations in Pyocombo 8 basin. Please bear in mind that this is not the latest. We are still developing this model, so this model is built using the outcrop data from surface. So until now, we don't know the thickness of the Payakumbu basins since there is no exploration well in this area. If we can summarize our stop, stop set today from stop set one, which is we find the basements of the where we find the border fault in this area. And then we're moving to the southeast, we find the stop set two, where the fanglomerates as the part of the reef initiation stage, followed by the, the, in the upper section, followed by the initiation of the channel, uh, the amalgamated channel, where we find in the stop set three and four, the braided stream in the medial environments is, uh, is quite a de developed very well. And in the in the low topography relief in the stop set five, six, seven, we find the, the distal environment of the meandering uh, channel, which we believe could be will be uh, the axial channel, by proved by the uh, the paleocurrent measurement of the the outcrops in the uh, distal environment. So if we make the cross section horizontal cross section from A to A accent, so this is some representative sedimental log profile from the each uh, locations, showing that the main depositor is start from the uh, stop set one and become shallowing, become shallower uh, uh, going to the southeast, followed by the, the general uh, paleocurrents for the alluvial complex. 
So, and this paleography maps indicates that this is the Kellogg's Sambilan border fault as the border where the sediment, sediment takes a place initially. So, it's, I put the question mark here to indicate that we don't know exactly the quantity of the alluvial fan in this area due to the huge size of the outcrop, but we believe that it could be more than one uh, alluvial fan developed in this area. And we also see the green color here is the part of the uh, meandering channel of the axial channel systems where are perpendicular to the alluvial fan uh, uh, directions go to the west. So going to the, the, the Takung transfer fault where we believe to be the, uh, the, the low. So uh, I think that's all done from me, this explaining the, my findings in the uh, outcrops in the Payakumbu area. So I will hand on to Mas Iqbal Fardiansa. He will explain in detail about the implication of the outcrop that we find today to the reservoir Geobadi, which will be helpful for the subsurface interpretations. So Mas Iqbal, please time is yours. So thank you, Ari. Uh, previously, we already looked at some uh, product of sand drift deposit. We look at the sedimentology and uh, geobody. Also, Ari already classified the faces in, uh, in uh, his uh, study in Bayakumbu. So what we can bring up from uh, this outdoor after this trip, actually, in this occasion, I would like uh, briefly explain how we quantify the fluvial channel bodies from 3D digital outcrop models. And principally, this is the workflow that we use for digital outcrop model for geobody analysis. And we start from a literature study and field study by Mas Ari Wibowo. I think this is Mas Ari Wibowo already classified the uh, geobodies and uh, classified the faces. And second, we also collect uh, several uh, digital outcrop model data from uh, Harrow Valley and also measure a hundred data that is set uh, for geobody in, in from a virtual outcrop model and in order to get a better database and high uh, level of uh, confident level of the database we also follow it with the modern system in west sumatra so overall the data incorporating and and, and calibrate with the um, field measurement data and the transfer into the database so Keep in mind the database is very uh, principally very useful for us because the data set to provide the database as an analog for predict and for casting the faces your body in the subsurface such as when you are uh, uh, have a well spacing database when you want to correlate between well to well and also when you are you are dealing with the modeling with the variogram modeling this is I think important and as the consideration data. So let me start with the single story channel. This is uh, we actually collect a hundred data set from medial to uh, distal area. So uh, this is sort of probabilistic of uh, the width of the channel. If you look at the P50 here, the width uh, 18 meters and the P50 thickness is 3.24. So the data actually uh, collected here around five, uh, five, 50 percent for uh, for all data population so if you look at the medial area of the uh, the channel so it tends to have a deeper and narrow shape and uh, meanwhile in distal area uh, the channel slightly wider and shallow channel so it it's represented by by the uh, histogram here and here so keep in mind that the scale of the channel, the single channel body that I talk here, probably high variability. It's a, a range from three until up to 40 maybe, meters. Maybe. And yeah, maybe. The, scale, uh, uh, the scale are variable and the thickness reaching up to 10 meters. And the second, we'll move to the multi-story channel geo body. This is uh, the, the second largest data set that we have. Uh, we collect uh, over uh, 70 data set, which is to then 30% of data population in here. 
So when we look at the probabilistic here from a single channel, the P50 width ranging from uh, reaching the 90 meters and the P50 thickness at the, uh, reaching the 5.2 meters. We also predict that the channel bed might be uh, over than 200 meters. Uh, it is uh, associated with the maximum of the channel that we, that we collect in uh, this outcrop. Those standard deviation is low, slightly low, so it's uh, indicating the, quite, uh, the data is quite dense in here. So let's move to creepers play uh, bodies. This is actually not a part of the channel. This is actually a part of the upper bank, but it's still the geo bodies in uh, the subsurface actually. So we, we still have a limited data in this area, uh, in this outcrop data. So uh, it took just 10% uh, from uh, data population. If we look at the P50 width here from probabilistic, it's around uh, 24 meters and P50 thickness, uh, it's around uh, 0 0.9 meters. So if we look at the, the thickness and width, the thickness of the splay, a uh, splay is uh, very thin, but uh, the distribution is quite large. So we have a wide ranging uh, from uh, uh, this uh, crevice play and the thickness ranging from uh, zero until uh, 2.8 meter, uh, reaching to three meter. The standard deviation relatively medium to high. So that's why this is not complete yet. So we still need uh, more data to improve our database. So, and, and in order to get a uh, high confidence level in database. So, at the last but at least, uh, we have uh, also amalgamated channel. So, amalgamated channel, we have very, very limited data. We only have 5% uh, of data population from all the data. So, at least we can get uh, the, at least the, we, we can know the, geometry and uh, and of the the channel itself so if we observe uh, in the medial area in you know, uh, we we know that the multi story stacking channel only observe in the medial area in terms of the geometry actually is the large geobody unfortunately i have a limited very limited database in here so uh, we still more uh, data in uh, for amalgamated channel bed. So in this case, we the channel bed we predict that the channel bed ranging uh, from 100 until up to 100. This is associated with the maximum of the channel in uh, amalgamated channel. So uh, the thickness also up to uh, 12 uh, until uh, 13 meters, I think. One of the challenges that we collected of the amalgamated channel here because the outcrop exposure, because we have very limited outcrop exposure because it's quite large uh, geo bodies. So sometimes the outcrop is not cover uh, all the, our interpretation from the 3D digital outcrop model. So this is the last the geo body database summary that we use. This is the architecture element that we have and we, we have a width, a thickness, and weight thinness ratio. And this is the number of uh, our, data, our data set, which is with uh, the poly occurrence and a deep also, uh, um, uh, we also deep and deep azimuth. So, so this is minimum uh, weight, minimum uh, the parameter, and this is mean parameter and median. Uh, parameter and we we have also the standard deviation here if you look at this this is showing uh, that with all data parameter we are quantify for subsurface necessity probably. so if you look at uh, the max uh, the relationship here showing a good relationship uh, between the width versus the thickness width this is i think this good analog to use as a consideration in uh, subsurface interpretation such as a variogram modeling and the other subsurface, subsurface work. So in order to get a better validation and better uh, data database, uh, we also validate with more modern environment in uh, West Sumatra, in uh, three uh, lake in Sumatra. So such as we have uh, Singkara Lake, Kerinci and Ranau Lake, 
investment matra we collect over 100 uh, measurement from the single channel actually and uh, if you look at here from the probabilistic it's a similar pattern in s curve so the 50 is not quite different between uh, the uh, single channel from outcrop of the brown information and the single channel from uh, like Sinkara, Krenchi, and Rano. See, so when we look at the also in uh, database and uh, histogram here, this is very similar pattern between um, modern and ancient system. This is strongly indicate that uh, the modern system might be linked to, to the ancient system, maybe any relationship between the ancient and modern system in West Sumatra. So, Last but not least, this is the comparison between the single channel uh, in every uh, in certain tectonic, even in certain tectonic uh, geometry and basin geometry and location. So uh, this is actually the single channel from uh, Brown information and Lake Sinkara is when we look at here. This is very narrow. Uh, uh, with and we will, we will also the single channel from William Fogg formation, which is this is a part of foreign basin in uh, US. We have a wide range of the channel itself. So we also put the single channel from the Mahakam River, modern Mahakam River, this colleague from Ramhana 2015. So the, the channel is quite larger than uh, a previous one. So this is the, I can share, so this is the application to the subsurface, actually, please note it. This is the analog and uh, art prop reservoir, probably it can use as to filling the gap between the data resolution, because this is a new uh, technology, we can virtual our crop model that cover uh, from uh, uh, the data set, the high resolution data set, and the full uh, resolution data set. And the second, I would like to emphasize that if you are dealing with the well correlation, I mean, in this case, if, uh, if you have working and in, spa, in area with spares of well data set, even the poor uh, seismic image, this geobody analog database is one alternative to improve the confidence level in subsurface interpretation. So also the data, uh, the data set, probably can be utilized uh, as an input for, for photogram modeling in uh, uh, geomodeling in the subsurface. So this is actually uh, the art, digital ultra model that we are integrated in uh, East Kalimantan. If you look at here, this is the outcrops, this is a model, and this is the seismic. This is why I told previously the first that uh, this is uh, Virtual ultra model is a new uh, technology. How we uh, fill in the gap between the data resolution from outcrops to the seismic data. So one part uh, from me in this last session, uh, the outcrop is just not outcrop to be visited and observed uh, in the field, but how we preserve and quantify the value, implementing them for the subsurface. Hopefully we can get inside a more inside from this trip. And I would say a little bit about my organization. Since this is uh, Ari and I have a part of the GeoPengia Research Group founded in 2010. We actually is non-profit organization with multidisciplinary resource. Our uh, field, our, our main focus only field and experimental based research mostly not mostly related with subsurface. More than 60 publications were already done away with it. So don't forget, we have an Indonesian digital opera model that's built by Dickie Harris and Leon. Actually, you can uh, follow it, research great. So, so thank you, Melinda. If uh, probably that's that I can share uh, today. Okay, thank you. Mas Ari, Mas Iqbal, for the nice presentation, yeah, very interesting. I think uh, how about to take uh, some a break for five minutes okay. since we have a uh, fa fast fasting here. Okay. Yeah. Good.
Okay, five minutes break ya. Uh, before we continue to the question session ya. Okay, I think we can start yeah the question session yeah. 
Ya, yeah. can you continue, Mas Ricky? Okay, uh, first question from Rubens. Rubens, you can turn on your audio for uh, giving the questions. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Rubens. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the advantage uh, for me to give a question. Uh, I am Rubens from SMA Negritika Yogyakarta. Uh, I would like to ask, is there any evidence of mass extinction of vegetation in the past in Ombilin Basin regarding there are lots of coal deposit in there? So, I mean, is there an even like the Siberian kind of like Siberian traps like that in the Ombilin Basin? And just for that, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mas Ruben. I will try to answer. So the question is related with the Ombilin Basin. So uh, actually today we focus in Payakumbu Basin, so I can confirm that in the Payakumbu Basin specifically, there is no indication of the coal. So there's no evidence of coal, so there's no proof of the, the, the mass extinction of the vegetation in the Payakumbu Basin since, like I explained before, uh, the uh, lacus deposit is not developed very very well in the Payakum basins so far, based on our surface uh, mapping. Uh, Mas Iqbal, can, can you can add uh, with the Ambulin basins specifically related to so, the Sawal information? We are not talking about the Ambulin basin actually, really, but this related to mass extinction with the vegetation, I think we also see in the side see in the slide of Ari previously that there is uh, any of uh, rootlets in the top of the channel but it's not uh, create the uh, coal uh, deposit there because uh, uh basin is very oxidized and poor drainage and we know that reduction is not uh, working very well in this basin so Ari <coughs> yeah Okay. Agree with so, yeah. okay, I think that's uh, answer the question here. Yeah? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, no. next we have we have Pak Erlangga. Silakan Pak. Okay, uh, good morning and thank you Mas Iqbal and Mas Ari for the very interaction uh, interactive presentation. Thank you Pak. The question is, uh, I have uh, two questions actually. So first one is, is there any tectonic, or in this case, like a fault reactivation involved in the switch between the multilateral to amalgamated channel? Or it is just a simply a pure autocyclic process? Uh, the second one is, uh, this place is unique and uh, very isolated. So I'm just wondering if there is uh, somehow any sort of connection from the these two basin, Payakumbu or Ambilin basin, into the outside world. An example, uh, how it is compared to the surrounding open marine in uh, Sumatra, and uh, how it is correlate to the regional Eustace uh, curve. Maybe that's all my question. Okay, so let me recap the questions. The first question is, is there any relate, uh, associated with the four reactivations? in the uh, switching related to the switching uh, direction of the channel or it could be a pure autocyclic process yeah. and the second question is the relationship between the ombilin basin and fayoko basin re uh, regarding to the for example the regional ecstasy does it correct is it correct yeah it's, it's correct so let me answer it first based on the surface mapping uh honestly i would say there is no from the surface mapping that we've done in this section in the Payakumbu area, I would rather than say this pure autocyclic that control the changing of the, the channel migrations due to the nature of the dynamic of the weather stream and the uh, meandering system. So I would say it could be more related with pure autocyclic. But Masibal, we can add later on. Um, uh, regarding this question number one, is I'm not sure about the regional situation, but what, what can I say about the, uh, the, rate, the relation between the Omilin and the Payakumbu? Uh, actually, we believe that the Payakumbu is still a part of the sub-Omilin basins. So 
hopefully the the the, the major structure uh, control that control ambulance it could be uh, associated as well with fire combo. Uh, maybe perhaps Mas Iqbal can add more detail. Yeah, I just want to add about the uh, the Paliogan Graben in the West Sumatra. Actually, uh, the Paliogan Graben that we see here, I think. Uh, so, so the Paliogan Graben, uh, Paliogan Graben that we're looking at here, the Ambulan Basin and the Payakumu Basin. This is the current condition that we have uh, in West Sumatra. Actually, we don't know. Uh, but uh, the size of the Payakambu Basin itself, probably the Ombilin and Payakambu Basin, it can be the, the one of basin that later on in the, uh, the late Miocene uplifting separated from Payakambu Basin and Ombilin Basin. We don't know until now because we have very limited data for a subsurface data set. Actually, we have uh, massive exploration activities and study by Caltech at that time. I think it is just developed by, uh, by uh, Tom, Tom Hedrick at that time. So I think that that's just the Ari, because when we look at the Ombilin and Payakumbu Basin, we have very short, uh, the shortening of the two of the basin is very significant due to of the uplifting of the late Miocene Barisan Mountain. Probably that's that I can add, uh, Ari. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I agree with but So does it make sense, uh, Mbak Erlangga? Does it answer your questions? No. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. No problem. Okay. I think there is a second question, Pak. It's already answered. The second question, I think it's uh, answered already. Oh, sorry, yeah. okay. About the it's main not, main. not quite sure is whether is it any correlation to the uh, regional eustacy there, eh? No, we don't know. We don't know. We don't have any evidence and any, so we're not sure. <clears throat> okay. Pak Win, the next question, next question from Pak Win. <coughs> you can turn on your audio, Pak Win. Hi. Uh, yeah. Greetings to everybody this morning. Great talk. Uh, exactly what I needed. The, the four walls have been closing in on me and uh, to get out into the field. And I can just about feel swinging my hammer on these outcrops. Great, great talk. Thank you so much. No problem. Hey, uh, yeah, let's, can we go back to uh, outcrop uh, six, where you have that paleo soil? Yeah. So uh, it, it kind of piqued my curiosity. You, you were saying that the, the you were referring to the, 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 uh, the paleo soil as a phenomenon somewhat related to poor, poor drainage. But uh, um, so is, is this a, 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 uh, just a localized phenomenon? Perhaps uh, because it's, uh, uh, there's been some stream switching and uh, there's uh, less uh, uh, activity going on in this particular area, or is this something that would be happening throughout the entire system, almost, uh, and it kind of relates to the just previous question. If uh, if you're seeing any uh, any uh, uh, relationship to a uh, a regional, I, uh, well, um, I don't want I don't want to call it a a sequence boundary, but some some sort of para sequence that something was happening and and the. Uh, uh, the uh, base level uh, moved uh, up, and and so there was a uh, uh, less uh, less gradient, and, and therefore, kind of a, a regional sort of effect. Uh, so again, I guess paleosol is it? No, uh, 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 stop six. Uh, subset six, Masik Bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yes. Your north north arrow is pointing at it. Uh, what what? Give me give me again. What 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 you how you see this? And I, I'm not sure I understand the yeah. the poor drainage idea. Okay. Okay. Let me recap your questions. So you're asking about regarding the paleosol's existence on this outcrop specifically. Is it will be the uh, distributed on the entire system, or will be only localized? And how's the relationship between the uh, this paleosol with the environment? Uh, does it is that your questions? 
Sure, that's cool. Okay, let me try to answer. So, as we can see here, the uh, paleo cells are dominant on starting on the top of channels. So, if you see in the bottom of the channel bodies, there's a lack of paleo cells. So, if there's the the question is about the the distribution on the entire area, I would say yes, because in the other area there is some paleo cells bed we can find, but we cannot is exa know exactly. Does either we seen the, the same the paleosol bed or not? But from this outcrop section, what I can say, there is some changing of the uh, the environment from the from the uh, the channel bodies and the top below section, which we believe that could be an actively uh, meandering uh, channel, where it could be the below water table. So we can see there's the lack of the the paleosols develop here. So it doesn't allow it didn't allow the paleosols to grow uh, to to develop in this area. Meanwhile, in the top section, we can see some lateral aggression switch, switching the channel. From this one, we can see from uh, north to south. So indicates that uh, this is moving from to different environments, likely. So it's, uh, below the picture, picture below, maybe could be uh, give a uh, clue that how the modern the uh, meandering system from the plant view from above. That is the nature of the meanderings which are uh, very uh, actively uh, switching to, to uh, it could be related with the poorly drained what i mean the poorly drained uh, environment which is this one the the, the, the abandoned almost the abandoned so the, the, the channel switch away apart away from the the, the main belt so uh, this one i mean the poorly drained which is as a result the poorly drained environment will produce the lack of the and the very thin bed of the channel bodies and the existence of the paleosols become more intense going upwards. We can, maybe we, it is not the coincidence between the other outcrops. We can see from stops at five, six, and seven in the crystal environments that is the dominant of the paleosols are developed in the, uh, the top section, which indicates that it's related with the uh, sediment supply and the accommodation space, where indicates that the uh, sediment energy become lower going the upwards. So I think that's all done for me, Matibal. Feel free to add what your idea. That's perfect, Craig. It's enough, I think. No, that, that, that got it. Good. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you, Bawin, for the question. Uh, we have the next question here yeah, from Wal Fajri. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Wal Fajri, you can, you can turn on your audio, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Morning, Bapak. Uh, thank you so much for the very interesting uh, inter uh, presentation this morning. Very good. Uh, that's a uh, geologist back to basic to see the outcrop. Uh, my question is related to the structure, actually. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more about uh, how was the tectonic activities on this area? that resulted the massive block of the outcrops there in the Haro Valley. Okay, so let yeah. me recap the question is, oh, have you finished Bang Fajri? Yeah. Okay, That's so it. let me recap the question is, to elaborate the structure control, which allow this outcrop, uh, this uh, deposits, deposits uh, outcrop to the surface. Uh, is that the equations, Mang Padri? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it the, the the fall is still continuously from the Kalasambilan fall, or there is some major any other major fall there to control this area? Okay, okay. Um, uh, from my based on my surface study, actually, I would say that the 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 structure that control during the position of this deposits is happen in the uh, paleogen is related with the paleogen graben so regarding the uh, we don't know exact uh, for me personally i'm not it's not my uh, i'm not very sure about the, the current tectonic that control in this area the, the active one so maybe mas iqbal can explain elaborate a bit more about the so current structure related the tectonic reactivation in this area actually it's coincident with the late miocene uplifting of the bukit barisan mountain 
Actually, this is the polygon graben uh, that we know the pi kumbu is that the polygon graben and then uh, inverted during the late Miocene to Pliocene. So that's why the outcrops of the uh, uh, brownie formation in the spacing is uh, exposed to the surface actually. So keep in mind that uh, the basin itself, I think, is not as de uh, very deep because uh, we can get the exposure of the brown information, which is that that is uh, the scene drift sequence from uh, that basin. I think that that I can uh, edit three for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Masikbar. So, Mahfajri, does it make sense? Okay, thank, thanks for the explanation. Um, just a, a comment uh, yeah. that uh, we we knew, we knew this area near to this uh, area that Caltex before they drill uh, exploration. Maybe you know that uh, there is a Sinamar one well. Yeah. Yes, um, I think I don't know it's in Junjung area or somewhere else. And also, I I, I read that in the Sujunjung area also there is a company there also they they do the some activities there and then they get a discovery of the gas there yeah maybe you, you can get also some uh, data from uh, cinnamon wells for yeah. this uh, comparison yeah. Yeah. thank you thank you yeah. yeah just to add a little bit so actually the cinnamon well is located in the ombilian basins since now we are uh, dealing with the Paya Kumbu Basin as a sub basin of Ambilin, so we believe that the configuration is a bit different. So yeah, but it's good we can we can use the uh, some, some example of the published well, for example the Sinamar well uh, to for the for the to help for understanding the subsurface conditions. Thank you, Mas uh, Bang Fajri, atas uh, for the input. Thank you, sir. <coughs> we can move to the next question. Yeah, from Mr. Ian Wolf, you you, you maybe want to. Ask the question, Pat. Uh, good morning, Ian Wolf here in Jakarta. A yeah. uh, couple of quick questions. I think they're fairly simple answers. Uh, does the lack of fossils indicate freshwater deposits? Is one question. The second question is to determine if one or more fans could studies of residual minerals such as zircon or magnetite indicate the same source or different source, and thus one fan, one fan or different fans. Um, and then the third question is, if the deposition model is uh, similar to the present inland freshwater lakes, then is there sufficient biological material uh, in our deposit to make oil? Okay, uh, thank you, Pat. Okay. okay. Let, let me the, recap the questions. Yeah. So the first question is, does lack the lake fossils, fossils. Yeah, lake fossils yeah, indicate the uh, Fresh water of deposits, and the second question is, uh, I will take this is not a question. It's a like suggestion to take the uh, zircon and residual mineral to prove the existence of the more fans. And the third question is the depression of modern for the modern uh, channel. So does it uh, related with the? Is it the accommodation is enough for the depression of modern? It does. Is that your questions, Mr. Yan? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me try to answer uh, the first question is the lack of fossil. Yes, I can confirm that based on the surface mapping, we, there is a lack of fossils in this specific brownie formations. Yep, we, it could be indicated freshwater deposits, so it's not related with soup aqueous since uh, we find that a lot of paleosols and some vegetation uh, root, root lab as uh, evidence that this fan complex is deposit, was, was deposited uh, in the, the soup areal environment, so it's not soup aqueous. That's why we cannot find any indication of any uh, lack of stream product or any uh, subaqueous uh, sediments. And the second one is the, the residual mineral zero Um I think it could be helpful to, to know that the quant to quantity then the number of the uh, alluvial fan in this area when, and also to prove whether it's coming from the same or different fan. But we will we will uh, keep this input and we'll try to put on the next uh, research to put uh, to put on our agenda to, to do analysis for the rest of the mineral for but to be honest for me I'm not uh, we haven't done yet for the any uh, zircon uh, residue mineral to indicate the, the different pair 
And for the third questions, is the depositional model modern? Yes, it could be. Uh, yes, the modern depositional model could be the as good representative for this uh, ancient depositional model, uh, knowing that the. Uh, yeah, but it will be uh, depends on the parameters from the from from the modern one. So, but I would say yes, we can still find the active or the modern depositional model that can be similar with the deposits of the Paleocene uh, deposit of the Brani formation in this area. Uh, Mas Iqbal, feel free to add your idea. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the lack of deposit in this area, of course, we have a lot of uh, 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 geostratigraphy or the fossil probably indicate uh, the fresh water environment. So because it's, uh, uh, since we observe in ambulant in Spiacumbu Basin, there is, uh, we observe there is an any uh, no lack of strain uh, lie down there. So I think we know, the, we, we don't know the, the, any uh, fossil uh, existence in there. Probably just that three. That I can explain to you. Yes, completely agree. Um, Pak Iwan, Pak Iwan, is it, does it make sense or? Okay. Mr. Ian, do you want to have some discussion, some reply? Uh, no. no, thank you. That's very good uh, response. Thank you. Oh, okay. I think it's very good uh, input for us about the uh, how we de determine the fans in the brand information you know, since we don't know how much the fan develop across the Kellogg Sembilan fold itself. Thanks yeah. for good input, Pa Ian. Mm, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Pa Ian. Uh, next question, yeah, from Barry. Barry Nishyam, yeah. You can turn on your audio, please, for the question. Okay, I will just read the, the question, yeah. Uh, if, yeah. If, okay, in Brani outcrop, especially at alluvial fan facies, is there any volcanic material in the outcrops? Um, from the surface mapping, uh, thank you for all the question, Mas Barry. So yeah. from the surface mapping, we can see the in the polymer, in the conglomerate, conglomerate deposit, we see there's some some fragment of andesite um, as a part of the the, uh, the previous igneous rocks, but for specific volcanic material in the, I think we have a lack of uh, volcanic uh, grain in the in the in the sandstone beds in the distal environments. It's more more the quartz dominance here, so it could be there. There's some some indication of the volcanic, but it's not many. I think. Mm, from okay. Description. So, Mas Iqbal, feel free to add. Mm. So since we know that the brand formation is part of the early sand drift deposit, mostly that we know from, I think Ari understand very well about this area. So I think the provenance itself from coming from the, the uh, quantum formation in the northern part and the southern part area. I don't know, we just do quantum formation. It's not composed of the volcanic material, but in the late um, Pliocene, probably like the quaternary uh, volcano will develop in West Sumatra as well, but it's not related actually with the with the uh, early cinder product in from granny formations. Mm. Okay, okay. For, thank you for the question and answer. Uh, next question from Sanya. Yeah, Sanya, you can turn on your audio, please. Thanks, Riz. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah. Um, thank you for the very good presentation. Uh, if we can, if we can go back to the presentation on the statistics of different single channel banks in tectonic settings, yeah. I'm wondering whether we can take a simple idea from those examples. For example, can we take uh, one main control that makes the uh, difference in the length of the channels itself? For example, is it is it whether uh, is it from the uh, topography or from the uh, source of sediments, the green that the green sizes, etc. 
Okay. So, Mas Iqbal, can we move to? So let me recap the questions. Thank you, Mbak uh, Tanya, atas, uh, for the questions. So the question is, what the so basically the question is what parameter control the the length and width of the the single story channel? Is that the uh, questions? Actually, can we take one one main main control from those four examples? Okay. So the main control of the single story channel. Well, maybe you can elaborate more detail in the scaling relationship in the single channel. Slide number 29 uh, or 30. Yes, okay. yeah, this one. Um, I think Mas Iqbal will explain this more detail. It's Mas Iqbal who will measure this one by one. Uh, feel free Mas Iqbal to elaborate in detail. So the main control of this is the measurement. It's the uh, presentation with the different single channels lengths of different tectonic settings. Yeah. Some moment. Mas Iqbal, please, you can may elaborate in details this measurement since you... Sorry, sorry, I'm mute. This... Okay. So, of course, uh, yes, uh, the topography, the, the technique uh, itself uh, from uh, uh, the fire combination itself will control the geometry of the uh, single channel itself. As example here, when you look at the, the single channel in a uh, medial area, we have uh, a narrow channel and slightly deep, it's like a V-shaped channel. So indicate this, there is a high slope of the fan. And when we look at in distal area, we have a single channel in here. So the single channel is slightly wide and uh, relatively thinner compared to the medial area. It's made controlled by the, by the topography and the tectonic uh, uh, activity in the area actually. It's almost same when we look at the modern system. The modern system yeah. Yeah. here. Yeah. So right. probably the next slide. This is showing us the single channel that the tectonic basin geometry, the basin size, significantly uh, exactly will. Um, control development of uh, the geo, geo bodies within the basin itself. So if we look at here, we have a brand information here, and the single channel is very no, narrow. If you compare with the William Falk in US, this is the Portland Basin actually, and this is actually the Sindrif uh, system in Sumatra, and this is if you look at the Mahakam River, this is currently we dealing with the four nine actually not active uh, channel, not active the tectonic, but we have uh, some topography that control the chan the single channel itself. So we have a wider uh, geometry, the length of the ge geometry of uh, the, the width of the channel itself. So maybe that's the thing I can explain. So. Whatever the tectonic basin geometry also and and the tectonic event will control the the deposit uh, within the basin itself. Okay, mm. so that's why we cannot uh, be careful when you are uh, using the analog, uh, such as you can take uh, some analog for Central Sumatra Basin. You can take from the Mahakam, Mahakam Delta or Mahakam. And since Mahakam Delta, you can put that into the Sumatra. Probably it's not quite match because yeah, the tectonic, the geometry of the basin itself, the control of the uh, 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 climate or uh, the position at that time might be uh, deliver different uh, uh, geometry of the uh, channel bodies itself. Okay, probably that I can add. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sonia, for the question. Yeah, uh, last question. Uh, we have Mr. Rahmat Fauzi. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Good morning. 
My name is Fauzi. I'm from Payakumbu, and now I was doing my final project in Payakumbu. Okay. I have found some outcrop of conglomerate called limestone member, also fillet and shell member, which is the member of Kuantan Formation. But okay. I found the outcrop in Payakumbu City. It's about 20 kilometers to southwest, southwest from Haro Valley. Okay. And based in the map that show before, it doesn't belong to Payakumbu Basin. And the question is, is the outcrop was deposited in Payakumbu Basin or not? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mas Fauzi. So maybe we can collaborate in the future, yeah? <laughs> if you uh, have some outcrops key in the Payakumbu Basin. So yeah, the question is, you find some conglomerate cases with uh, you believe that is part of and some conglomerate that have the fragment coming from Kuantan formations, but unfortunately, it's beyond of the Payakumbu Basin. To be honest, I don't know exactly the location that you're saying because it's, it's related is still uh, near close to Payakum Basin or more close to Ongilin Basin. But if you say it's still in Payakum City, so I would say it still belongs to Payakum Basin. So may, maybe we, we uh, for our own version, we need to update our own uh, the geology maps in the future. So uh, maybe Mas Iqbal can elaborate more. So. So that's why uh, I said uh, previously in the uh, beginning uh, of the opening the uh, this trip. So actually, the study has uh, not finished yet. So we open up uh, idea, concept, and feedback uh, during uh, this trip, and we still acquire more data. We still acquire uh, the study and data from Payakumbu Basin to get a more uh, comprehensive result, I think, for uh, this, uh, from the Payakumbu Basin. Because keep in mind that the Payakumbu Basin itself have a very limited reference site. So mostly the previous, previous uh, work working in Ambilin Basin. So that's why the, all the reference site coming up from uh, Ambilin Basin itself. Okay, see? Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mas But Yeah, I think that's, Although we can explain that's the good topic. input and good input if you yeah. uh, study more in Payakumbu Basin. Mm. Maybe we can discuss later on to discuss exactly the, where the location of the outcrop that you're talking about. So we can try to pull out on the maps and see is how far from the, the main depot center of Payakumbu Basin. So, yeah. Okay. yeah, okay. Maybe you can put your email in the chat box so he can reach you. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. I think this will mm -hmm. end the question session, yeah. Uh, thank you for the all the question. Uh, on behalf of Fossi, we would like to thank you very much for your time. Your sharing session is very interesting. I hope you can continue re your research in the Payakumbu and in the other, other area also. Uh, I think that's, that's all. I think I will give to, to Melinda. For thank, the, you. Um, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, as a closing statement, Mas Ari, Mas Iqbal, and all the co-authors for this uh, research. Uh, we are waiting for the final research and maybe later on in the future, you can share the final one. And thank you very much for your time. And don't miss our next session. will be from Henry Prosamentier uh, next week. Uh, we will share the uh, flyer and then you may, you may register for this talk as well. So thank you very much. See you in the next session of Fossil Talk. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Terima kasih semuanya. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Ricky yeah. and Melinda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ring tenggorokan, Rick. Stop puasa dulu lah. Wah, kacau dan nih. Okay, Ini recording-nya nanti aku, aku kasih ke Mas Ibal ya. Ya, yeah, ya yeah, aman, Rick. Okay. Santu Irik, Santu Irik, Santu Irik. Oke, okay, siap, 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 siap. Terima kasih, Mas Ibal okay. semua. Oke, okay, aku yeah, end meeting ya. Yeah.